Hello! In this video, I want to talk a bit about 3D printing filament and what plastics you can feed into a 3D printer to make it actually print stuff for you. Far and away, the most popular filament is PLA plastic, which usually comes in a roll like this. Um, and basically, you take this plastic and you feed it down into the main chamber of your printer, and it goes down and it gets heated up to about 200 degrees Celsius, and then gets squirted out uh, into the shape of your object. Um, PLA is specially formulated for 3D printing. It's a kind of plastic, actually cornstarch based, I believe. And so the advantage of that is that it melts at the right temperature and it solidifies at the right temperature for 3D printing. In other words, other materials are a little more finicky than PLA, but PLA is generally the easiest to, to print with. I highly recommend, if you get a 3D printer, stick with PLA for a while, like until you get really comfortable with PLA, because other filaments will take a lot of time to um, figure out the right settings for, and we'll get to that in a second. And um, also, if your printer jams with a weird filament in it, it's gonna be a lot harder for you to fish that filament out clean out little bits of plastic that have dried and, and uh, coagulated in various uh, bits in the printer uh, compared to PLA. So, you know, I stick with PLA. It creates uh, miniatures and, and models and objects and such. This is a little, like, um, uh, weird creature th uh, thing, uh, kind of a Halloween-ish thing. And uh, you can see you get a, a good amount of detail in this. It's actually printed in, in fairly low resolution, um, but it looks, it looks fine. And... Um, the nice thing is it will print pretty cleanly and pretty easily. Um, let's see, I have another example here. This is kind of the backdrop for that. So you get a nice, uh, a nice flame, flames there. The thing I like about PLA filament is it's increasingly cheap. So this roll is, I think, about 20 bucks on Amazon. And that's about what you're gonna spend for a full roll of uh, this is, I'm trying to remember, um, one kilogram of filament. So it's about 2.2 pounds, I believe. And that's a lot of filament. I mean, you will get lots and lots of stuff out of a pound of plastic. So, especially because you're not printing necessarily the entire thing. So when you print, as I mentioned in other videos, I think, uh, and if not, I will soon, um, when you print an object, you can decide how much infill there is, how much you print in the middle of the object. So what would normally be a solid object gets just... A, a light sort of interlocking webbing in the middle of it, and that saves on your plastic, which is very nice. So I like PLA for um, for the fact that it, it works um, for all that stuff very well. Anyway, um, let's see here. Um, then there's ABS, and ABS is standard, you know, plastic toy plastic. The stuff your action figures are made of is generally ABS or some uh, variant thereof. Obviously, there are other materials used for, for them now. But w what you imagine a, pla a, a plastic action figure being made of, that's ABS. And the nice thing about ABS is it's a little stronger than PLA. And it's a little more flexible. So this stuff is quite rigid. And if I were to uh, work with it like this, it would, it would break. Um, I mean, it's not going to break just with a little bit of, 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 of motion, but especially if you have something quite, quite um, delicate, like this little miniature here, um, and it doesn't want to zoom in and focus on that, but that's, that's fine. Let me get my head out of the way. Sometimes that does it. You get the idea. Um, when you're trying to work with this particular model, and there may be some extra material on there you're trying to pull off, it's fairly easy to break these really small uh, bits of detail, whereas ABS can take a little bit more punishment, if you will. Uh, it also needs a higher temperature to print at, and it's much more finicky, finicky to print with than PLA. I should also point out, some uh, printers only print PLA. That's all you can do. So be aware of that when you're buying your printer, what it can support. Um, so ABS is nice for a lot of applications where, you, again, you want something that's a little sturdier, uh, something that uh, is going to hold up on, under some serious stress. 
Um, yeah, PLA is good for that. Then you have materials like Ninja Flex. Ninja Flex is a rubber style filament. It is a plastic that's been infused with a rubber-like material. So what you get out of it is kind of like the sole of a shoe. In fact, some people will actually 3D print sandals uh, out of Ninja Flex and use it for that. And that actually works quite well. Unfortunately, Ninja Flex is floppy. It is like a shoelace. Um, you know, it's not like this where it's all rigid. It actually comes and it kind of does this and droops down. So some printers simply do not have the right uh, structure of machinery to push that Ninja Flex filament through in a way where it can actually feed out. What I, uh, the one printer I have here that's, that would be really good for Ninja Flex cannot print it because it ends up jamming in the middle of it there because of how the gears work. So be aware of that. Sometimes some of those weirder plastics just don't work very well. And you have material like TPU, which is technically a food safe 3D printing filament, which is really cool. So it means you could print things like cups and mugs and plates and, you know, plastic knives and things along those lines. The problem is, while the filament is technically food safe, your printer isn't. Especially if you printed, say, PLA in it before putting in TPU. So there are going to be little bits of PLA or ABS or whatever in your pipeline somewhere, maybe even very tiny bits of it. And then as you're printing that TPU, you're going to get bits of that in your mug or other object. So be aware of that. I would not use TPU for something that I'm going to... Um, um, I wouldn't use it for a fork or a spoon, for example. That's going in your mouth, um, and you're actually like licking it, basically. Something like a decorative plate, I think, would be fine. So I certainly would not, also would not use it for something going into the microwave. TPU is is not necessarily microwave safe, especially with some with liquid in it. Um, and, you might, and I don't know if TPU will like immediately melt or if it will just over time deform. But I still wouldn't use it in a microwave or any, anywhere else hot. Um, the, much less because of the outgassing. Right, you're kind of melting plastic there. That's not a good thing. Uh, but TPU can be fun for certain applications. Um, there's also T glaze, which is a clear filament. I mean, it's not completely clear, but it's closed it's like frosted glass. Um, and that's again kind of tricky to, to print with, but you can do it. So the big thing to be aware of uh, here, um, if I haven't explained this enough already, is stick with PLA for a long time. It's a good Middle of the road filament will get you a you know it will get you where you want to go, and then make sure your printer can support other kinds of materials, uh, and then you can try you know playing around with some of these other things and have fun with it. But definitely do that on an experimental basis. Don't expect to be doing all your printing in ABS uh, or anything else. Those are those are fun perks to having a 3D printer, but uh, I think PLA is a, a good a good place to to start. So and to to stay for a while. So. Hope that's been useful, and uh, I'll have more videos coming soon.